South African and Australian solicitor and former professional boxer Lavondo officially cited that he would be running as an independent candidate in the 2024 general elections. Lavondo is a three-time world boxing champion in two weight classes and currently operates a boutique legal business in Sydney called Love More Lawyers. Today we shine the spotlight on him in a bit to get to know what he has to offer to South Africans. Hi to good evening. My name is Tabo Malukwani. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Without wasting any time, Love Mondo joins us via Zoom all the way from Australia to talk to us about his independent candidacy in this year's elections. Love more, much appreciated for joining us. Welcome to Soweto Today. Thank you, my brother. I'm actually joining you from Polokwane. <laughs> oh, you're back. I've been back, you know, since the beginning of the year. Oh, great stuff indeed. Um, well, uh, man, I, I, you know, I, I'm very much interested in finding out. I mean, you, uh, you know, since you're back in, in, in the country, I mean, my first question was just going to be like, you are Australian based and, you know, uh, uh, how are you willing to get your campaign trail, you know, running since uh, you usually travel a lot? Yeah. Look, before I answer that, uh, I think, you know, I would like to take this opportunity, you know, uh, to pay respect, you know, uh, you know, to a legend, you know, we lost, you know, this past Monday, you know, Dingan, the Rose of Soweto, you know, Tobela, you know, I I'm saddened, you know, and shattered, you know, by the news of his passing. You know, this is a man, you know, who through uh, the sport of boxing, you know, gave me and many more black, you know, athletes, hope you know during apartheid you know when our lives didn't matter so much in our own country you know he 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 made us realize you know that through sports you know we could all unite you know despite our color differences and also made me particularly you know realize that you know sports you know could be a way out of poverty you know in apartheid south africa you know he helped put us on the world map at a time when we didn't so much play you know a second fiddle to the white fighters you know, we weren't even in the same band. You know, it was a stain on black fighters, but through his uh, fighting skills, you know, his great personality, his you know, tremendous, you know, charisma and good looks, you know, the honor was restored. So we lost a legend, you know, in and out of the boxing ring. So, you know, rest in eternal peace, my brother, until we meet again. Now, to answer your question, uh, look, um, <laughs> I'm back in South Africa. Uh, it's something that I've been working on, you know, for a long time. You know, it's not just a decision that I made overnight. You know, I've been planning, you know, uh, to come back, you know, and go into politics, you know, probably since about 2010, which was the last time when I came to South Africa when I fought Bongan Malwase. You know, even then I was already concerned, you know, about, you know, the state of our country, you know, and, mm. um, and I started preparing, you know, for the return. I you know, as you know, I'm a very educated guy, and I ended up, you know, studying uh, international law, you know, uh, politics, you know, human rights, governance. So I've been preparing for this for a long time because I'm, co you know, I'm concerned. You know, our country is heading towards the wrong direction, and if nothing is done now, you know, uh, um, we we might end up, you know, economically, we're gonna end up, you know, at a point of no return. You know, mm. like our neighboring country Zimbabwe. Mm. So uh, it's something that I've been working on for a long time. Well, um, you know, Lavmo, I'm very much also interested in finding out, uh, you know, you know, you know, what inspired you to 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 join politics. As you uh, explained that, uh, you know, uh, you studied international law. I mean, you are well versed when it comes to uh, issues pertaining the law, uh, uh, you know, and stuff. Uh, what was the drive, uh, you know, besides? Uh, what you just said now that, look, the country is heading to a wrong direction. Look, I've always been uh, you know, a political activist, even, even when I was growing up in, uh, in South Africa, you know, during apartheid. Uh, you know, and, um, you know, like everybody else, I was happy, you know, when we got our first democratic you know, elections, you know, um, in 1994, you know. But something didn't sit well for me right there, you know. Uh, Particularly when I saw, you know, our current president, you know, and I think at the time he was the Secretary General of the ANC, yeah. and um, 
you know, it was just a few months after we had our first democratic election. And this is a guy of, you know, you, you have to realize, you know, he didn't have much money before that. You know, he was he was pretty much a pauper like the rest of us. But a few months after that, you know, the guy already owned a farm. The guy was whining, you know, and dining, you know, with, with top people. That just made me realize, okay, we're heading towards the wrong direction. You know, we, you know, um, where all of a sudden did, you know, his wealth come from so quickly. So things like that worried me. And uh, I was also concerned, you know, about uh, the introduction you know, of uh, BE, you know, even though, you know, the idea behind it is laudable, you know, mm. laudable if it's implemented, but it hasn't been impl implemented, you know, the right way. BE was put in place, you know, um, to allow you know broader participation in the in the economy by all people of South Africa, but you know it's become a cornerstone you know, of corruption and it's only benefiting a few you know whereas you know say about five percent where about ninety five percent continue to struggle so that that really concerned me, um, but look to answer your question you know um, I've always you know when I left South Africa you know I didn't cut you know the umbilical cord you know. Uh, I remained, you know, connected, uh, you know, to my country. I didn't defect, you know. I went, you know, overseas. I went to Australia, which is a failed first world country, you know, to um, to pursue my boxing career and 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 my studies. You know, uh, the I, you know the plan was, you know, for me to obtain some skills so I can come back and invest you know, in South Africa. Mm -hmm. But you know, over the years, you know, I've seen that our country, you know, wasn't heading the right, you know, in the right direction, and I felt, you know, it's time to come back home, you know, and uh, try and save this country. Mm. Love Mo, I want us to take a quick breather. When we come back, uh, let's uh, delve deep into some of uh, you know uh, your pillars, as we know that uh, uh, you uh, you plan on registering a political party uh, so that you can be able to run for the 2029 elections to maybe just get to understand more about uh, what are the key objectives uh, from your side. We're going to take a quick ad break. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching. So it's today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Malukwan. We're still joined in studio by uh, Love Mondo, who is a South African Australian legal practitioner, a former three-time world boxing champion, and now an independent candidate to talk to us about his candidacy in this year's elections as an independent. He's still with us uh, via Zoom. Love more, much appreciated for staying on. I mean, you know, uh, I, I was interested in finding out about your pillars. I know that uh, you intend to register a political party, um, you know, uh, come so that you can be able to contest the 2029 elections. Let's talk about uh, uh, what would be your key, um, you know, priorities uh, moving forward. Look, um, yeah. look, I'm campaigning on a number of issues, you know, uh, however, you know, the questions of unemployment, you know, and corruption are the major issues in this campaign. Uh, you know, um, it's unfortunate, but, you know, uh, our black leaders, you know, have failed our nation. You know, uh, if you, for example, take a look, you know, at uh, the consumer price index, it continues to rise under the ANC's leadership. And perhaps more significantly, you know, the nation's broader underlying inflation rate continues, you know, to skyrocket, you know, under the ANC's government. Um, you know, we also need to ask ourselves, you know, questions, you know, uh, like, you know, when was the last time, you know, the ANC administration you know, reduced the deficit in the last 30 years it has been in power? You know, we have a large budget, you know, deficit, but nothing has been spent on public service or you know, infrastructures or other projects, you know, that benefit the public. You also have to ask yourself, you know, when was the last time we grew our economy under the ANC administration? So it's clear, you know, that the ANC has no plan to reduce the deficit. That has been building up, you know, for the last 25 years or so since Mandela stepped down from office. So I'm coming into politics, you know, for, you know, uh, because I stand for a number of things, you know, for, I stand for a corruption free South Africa, you know, I stand for a South Africa where the future of our children is guaranteed, you know, a South Africa where, you know, people won't have to pay bribes, you know, to secure jobs, you know, 
a South Africa where, you know, the basic needs, you know, of our people, you know, like um, clean water, you know, better healthcare systems, you know, are met. You know, uh, I want a South Africa where, you know, uh, a child, you know, that attends, you know, uh, a public school, you know, has the same hope, you know, uh, as a child who attends, a, you know, uh, a, a private school. You know, um, so I stand against, you know, uh, policies, you know, like BE, you know, and CADA, you know, CADA deployment, because these are failed policies, mm. you know, that are, you know, destroying, you know, our, our economy. And you know, I've already explained why I have concerns, you know, with BE. But, you know, because of CADA deployment, you know, we end up having, you know, the wrong people, you know, holding positions that, you know, they are not, you know, uh, qualified for. And this just leads to more corruption. Mm. I mean, let's talk about, uh, you know, Limpopo province. I mean, we know that you are contesting there uh, and uh, the province is plagued by uh, a myriad of issues. I mean, you look at the issue of unemployment rate, which is sitting at 49.9 percent, which makes it the third highest after the Eastern Cape as well as the Northern Cape. Uh, you know, the issues, uh, water uh, you know, issues there, there's electricity issues, lack of housing. You look at projects such as the Guiani Water Project, which has not uh, been completed for the past over 10 years from, uh, you, you know, uh, since, uh, I mean, it's almost 15 years, if I may put it that way. Uh, it's still the same crisis at this stage. How do you plan on addressing these issues? Well, I'll tell you, you know, actually, the reason why I'm running as an independent is because I believe it's time for an independent voice for Limpopo. You know, you know, for too long, Limpopo and you know its contribution to the economy of South Africa has been ignored. You know, the ANC has taken Limpopo for granted and focused, you know, its political efforts on more challenges, you know, provinces like KwaZulu Natal, Gauteng, or Western Cape. You know, Limpopo candidates have had to follow. The party line and then keep quiet about Limpopo issues. So, as an independent candidate in the National Assembly, I don't have to follow the big party lines and shut up about Limpopo. You know, uh, so I'll become the voice of the Limpopo people and the economy of Limpopo. It's time that mm. Limpopo has an independent voice in Parliament. You know, I won't hold back in bringing the voice of the people of Limpopo. You know, to the people of South Africa, uh, the corruption of the big parties and you know them still in the world of. The people must stop. You know, to tell you the honest, you know, about you know, uh, you know, about myself, and I'm not just a politician. I'm also a humanist. You know, I'm already on the ground. You know, fixing problems that you know the municipalities you know yeah. are ignoring. You know, um, for example, you know, I'm fixing problems like you know the bedroom issues we had in Musina. I'm going around. You know, I'm blocking sewages in places like Musina and Toyando. You know. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm renovating community centers, centers for the elderly. I'm contributing towards, you know, child care. I sponsor a number of students, you know. I have a team on the ground, you know, cleaning up the streets, you know, and cemeteries that the, the municipalities, municipalities are ignoring. And, and I'm doing this, you know, out of my own pocket. So there is hope in, in Limpopo. There is, we just need the right leaders. And that's why I'm back and I believe we can fix, you know, in terms of jobs, I'll tell you what I, I'm already, I've already put, you know, um, a love more scholarly, you know, in conjunction in, with uh, a high tech homes company yeah. in Australia. You know, the scholarship will allow me to send South Africans to Australia to learn how to build modular homes. And then they'll come back to South Africa and teach, you know, the local people how to build these homes, thereby creating job opportunities for them. And at the same time, you know, uh, fixing the housing crisis problem, you know. Um, obviously, we have a big housing issue, you know, uh, housing crisis in, in, in Limpopo. You know, a lot of people still live in, in, in sheds. You know, a lot of people were promised, you know, RDP houses, and they've been waiting for them for 20 years. You know, and we know mm. what's happening. You know, those in power are giving them to their, you know, to their cronies, their friends, and they're even selling them. So, you know, I'm sick and tired of seeing my people living in shacks. Hence, I'm introducing, you know, uh, modular homes. Modular homes are very, they are affordable, sustainable, you know, and, and quick to build. So, I'm fixing two problems at once. But apart from that, you know, there is a reason why, you know, I, I, I you know, I'm, I'm against, you know, uh, 
policies like BE because you know, they're keeping potential investors away from South Africa. We need to bring back investors, you know, to South Africa, and that's what, that's the only way we are going to create job opportunities for our people. Mm. We need to get rid, you know, of you know, over regulations, which are keeping potential investors away. You know, you find even our skilled people are, you know, are taking their skills overseas. Mm. Lamo, I want us to take a quick get break. When we come back, we wrap up the conversation. Just want to pick your brain on the uh, NHI bill. Uh, a very contentious, controversial, you know, all sorts of things. But I just want to hear your stance on that as we are heading to the elections. Uh, do you stay with us? We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Much appreciated for joining us. We are almost at the end of the show. And I've been in conversation with independent candidate Love More Ndo, who's joining us via Zoom. Love More, uh, you know, as we conclude the conversation, I mean, uh, there is the NHI bill, which is very controversial. It has seen a lot of backlash, you know, rejection from other political parties and uh, some independent candidates also saying that it will decimate the health sector and the economy. They, let me hear your stance on it. What do you think? Do you think that the country is ready to have the NHI bill or it's just an issue that, uh, you know, there's, there needs more consultation? Look, this country is not ready for anything at this stage. You, know, you need to have, you know, qualified, uh, you know, uh, leaders before, you know, you can introduce any bills, uh, you know. It doesn't matter what bill or, you know, what legislation you, know, you put in place, you know, if it's not going to be implemented. You know, for example, you know, if you look at South Africa, we have one of the best constitutions, you know, in the world. But, you know, it's as good as nothing because it's implemented. So it doesn't matter what bill gets introduced, you know, under this, nothing is going to work. So, you know, uh, I don't care what's get, it's getting introduced, you know, um, it's just not going to work. Mm. I mean, we are three weeks away from the big day, uh, you know, the 29th of May, 2024. Let's talk about your work on Did the Did I ground. lose you? Uh, I I'm still with you, Love Paul. Uh, I was just saying that we are three weeks away from the big day, which is the 29th of May, you are 2024. You're frozen, brother. I can't hear you. Fortunately, um, um, we seem to be struggling with uh, Love more there. I'm not sure if uh, uh, you can still hear me. Love more, can you still hear me? It's Tabo again. We're in conversation with uh, Love yeah, I lost you there. Sorry, I lost you there for a bit. Love more, I was just saying that, uh, uh, you know, we are approaching uh, the big day, which is the 29th of May, uh, 2024. Let's talk about your work on the ground. Have you been, you know, crisscrossing the province of Limpopo and how are people receiving you there? Look, people are happy, you know, to have me back. You know, people see me, you know, as, you know, they are Moses sent to come, you know, help, to come save, you know. Um, you got to realize, you know, uh, I'm a South African, you know, I'm still a citizen of South Africa. So I'm coming home to fix problems that are being ignored, you know. Uh, so, you know, people are happy to have me back and, and, and people appreciate what I'm doing. I'm just not going out there talking, you know giving people, you know, free T-shirts, you know, like every other polit politician does, you know. You go out before the, you know, the elections, you give people free T-shirts, free, free food, and then you get their votes, and then they never hear from you again for the next, you know, five years, which is what, you know, the current leaders are doing. So I'm out there already doing things for people. So people are happy to have someone out there who's doing things for them. Mm. Uh, as we conclude the conversation, I mean, uh, you know, uh, what would be uh, your final message as we are heading to the elections, uh, you know, to general South Africans who, you know, some of them, it will be the first time that they will be casting their ballot there. What message of hope or would you want to bring to them? Look, I would say if you still have doubts about who to vote for on 29 May, ask yourself the following two questions, you know. Are you better off than you were 30 years ago? Is the future of your family more secure than it was 30 years ago? You know, your answers to these questions should determine who you should vote for. You know, and look, I'm not here to ask people to vote for me. 
you know, I'm here to tell people to make the right decision. You know, vote for someone you believe is going to, you know, uh, bring change, the change you've been waiting for since 1994. And if you believe I'm the man who can bring that change, then vote for me. But if you don't, vote for someone you believe will bring the change. Love Mondo, much appreciated for joining us on this show. Always a pleasure and uh, all the best. Thanks for having me. That was uh, Love Mondo, who is a South African-Australian legal practitioner and former boxer who is now running for president as an independent candidate in this year's general elections. He touched on various issues from uh, health issues to unemployment uh, to you know service delivery issues and uh, credible leadership, ethical leadership. Uh, that's what he was speaking about uh, that the country needs. Well, that's how we wrap up uh, today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you. So please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Send us an email. It's Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can call or WhatsApp us at 081-531-8857. Hi, to Nakatawa Molokwani and the rest of the team. It's good night from us and thank you for watching.